What if there was a way to get more from your brain, unlock its full potential? What if we could tap into the performance of high caliber athletes? Better memory, better focus, better productivity. What would it mean for you? Get more work done, make more money, score more goals, get back more time. What if it was right under your nose in your kitchen? Because it is. In a cold 2019 autumn morning in Vienna, Ilot Kuchogi wrote history when he became the first ever and still only person to run a marathon in under two hours. For this one individual to break this record, a whole team, including 41 other runners to set the pace, were assembled by Nike, which cost him a reported $30 million. No stone was left unturned, and the team nutritionist for the event, Armand Bettenville, even said that they measured the temperature of the liquids that Kipchoge consumed. Now, the reason I tell you this is because if we look at elite athletes, we see that every single margin counts, including maximizing cognitive ability. There is much that we can learn from Olympians on the track or the field and bring into our own offices or homes and make the most out of our own performance. If you're new around here, my name is Adam. I'm a performance nutritionist and the health and fitness coach. And in this channel, we help you become the fittest, strongest and healthiest version of yourself without gimmicks using science. Now, we all know that we need to fuel our muscles to get the most out of them, to get them to grow bigger, stronger and to last longer. But when it comes to the brain, it often gets overlooked. It's easy to think about your arm or to think about your leg, but it becomes difficult to think about your brain because we need to engage in metacognition or thinking about thinking to bring awareness to it. And nutrition for mental performance opens up the floodgates for biohackers and tech bros from the Silicon Valley to jump in with pseudoscience and speculation and pass it out as gospel. If I ask the average entrepreneur or executive who's interested in this area what they would recommend, the first thing they'll probably say is put salt into your water, add butter to your morning coffee or MCT oil, or perhaps even take some exogenous ketones or some sort of fasting protocol. Optimizing your nutrition for your brain and cognitive function could quite literally be the key that opens new doors for new performance standards for you, be it in the boardroom, on a sales call, or even on a tennis court. But what does the science say about nutrition and how it impacts mental performance? So I'm gonna look at this from two perspectives, acute and chronic. So if you think about nutrition for elite athletes like Lionel Messi or Patrick Mahomes, they have their global nutrition, as in their daily habitual diet that has an overall impact on their ability to perform. Then you have their more acute nutrition, such as what they eat before they go out on the field that impacts their immediate performance. Both are important and the same goes for brain fuel too. You need nutrition to feel your brain on a whole and how it works in general, but you also can acutely impact its performance by what you consume in the immediate term. The one that's the most difficult to be consistent with, but likely the most important is the global or chronic nutrition. Everyone, including me, loves a quick result, something that we can do now to give us an immediate return on our investment. But it's a lot more difficult to be consistent in the long run and get small but long-term payoffs. Your brain is part of your physical body, of course, and it accounts for a huge percentage of your metabolic rate. So understandably, good nutrition over the long term impacts its performance the same way that good nutrition impacts your physical performance. There is a special family of non-essential but very beneficial nutrients called polyphenols, which are specific types of antioxidants found in certain plants. These nutrients work in two ways. One, by protecting your brain against neurotoxins and neuroinflammation such as air pollution, environmental compounds and the effects of aging. And the second way, they work through enhancing memory and focus in the short term. One particular study followed healthy people across a 10 year period and found that those who consumed the lowest amount of polyphenols had significantly larger declines in psychometric test scores than those who consumed the highest amount of polyphenols. So what plants actually contain these ingredients? Well, there's loads of them in fact, but more specifically, the dark colored plants seem to have the most effect. Dark chocolate, specifically the cocoa, blueberries, red wine, coffee, and teas. But to get all of the beneficial brain boosting properties, some alliteration there, you need to consume as much variety as you possibly can. And a simple scientific, but easy to implement way to do this is to follow the different colors. The unique properties of the plants are what give them their distinct look. I also think that optimizing for consistency is far more important than trying to optimize for intensity for a few days or a few weeks. What I personally do is have my regular meals, such as breakfast, lunch, and dinner, 
And then throughout the weeks, I rotate through various different fruits and vegetables and depending on what's in season. It is no surprise that the athlete with the most Champions League appearances in history, Cristiano Ronaldo, and the player with the most playoff appearances in history, LeBron James, both have immaculate diets full of polyphenols. You hear of athletes that eat like crap and they still perform well, but they're not the kind of athletes that are still representing their countries at the age of 39, like these two goats. Now, before we move on, if you're somebody that wants to maximize your mental and physical performance, optimize your health and longevity with signs, then check out my coaching in the link below. In the Built to Last program, I've helped people like you going from watching YouTube videos on health and fitness to actually applying it to themselves, but more importantly, completely changing their life. No pressure at all. If you're interested, linked below, but now back to the video. Some athletes tend to fast before training or follow a ketogenic diet. And while it may work for them, in the sports nutrition community, it is well known that both of these diets or ways of eating are suboptimal for maximal output. There may be certain periods where fasted training is used temporarily to create some form of adaptations, but this isn't a long-term strategy. This experiment actually put this hypothesis to the test. Does fasting in the morning improve or worsen cognitive ability? They split 81 children into two groups, both fasted overnight, then took a maths test in the morning. One group then ate their breakfast and the other continued to fast. They all did the test once again and while no difference were noted in the fasted group, children who had consumed the breakfast of milk, cereal and toast had significantly higher levels of frontal brain activity and test scores. If you're watching this, you're probably not a child and you might think, well, does that really apply to me? And the answer is most likely. In fact, this systematic review found that short-term fasting either had no effect or worsen the multiple mental skills in adults. I know this is the point where people lose their shit and they say, well, you know, what about the lunchtime carb crash and slump? But that actually seems to be more closely linked with your overall quality of diet, your sleep or lack of, and your caffeine consumption. With the ketogenic diet, this is another area people can get confused when it comes to boosting your brain power. There does seem to be some evidence that the ketogenic diet may be beneficial for those with cognitive disorders, such as epilepsy, but then people will make logical leaps and assume that for those who are, have healthy brains, that a ketogenic diet is going to further boost your brain power, but that's not the same thing. There's also this misconception that your brain loves to run on ketones. This simply just isn't true. Well, your brain can run on ketones when in states of deprived carbohydrates, it does prefer glucose. With that said, there is no strong evidence to say that a ketogenic diet is terrible for short-term focus and memory. And if you love it, then I'm not going to try and get you to stop doing it. But it does become near or virtually impossible to consume enough polyphenols, which we already talked about, on the ketogenic diet because of its low carb nature. So that's not great given how we talked about their short term and long term impacts on your overall cognitive ability. So fasting and ketogenic diets are not great for athletic performance and probably not optimal for mental performance either. Enter carbohydrates. Now, the role of carbohydrates in sports performance is very important, not only in the general diet, but also in and around the workout itself. Much like your muscles store carbohydrates in the muscle for later use, so does your brain. This is called glycogen. Now diets that are high in refined carbohydrates, such as sugar, are actually associated with cognitive decline, where diets that are rich in carbohydrates that are complex in nature are not. And there are a few potential reasons behind this. Refined carbohydrates are typically void of any kind of fiber or nutrients outside of the sugar that they provide. You're more likely to overeat them, gain weight and be over fat, which in turn impacts the brain in indirect ways. With this paper showing that adults who had more fat mass were more likely to have smaller regions of the brain that were associated with memory and focus. But with complex carbohydrates such as oats, whole grain potatoes and so on, not only do you get more of the micronutrients and polyphenols, but you get a lot more fiber. Now this fiber is transformed to short chain fatty acids in the gut, which is something that your microbes feed on. Surprisingly to many, the gut actually contains neurotransmitters which interact with these microbes and can affect your brain through your vagus nerve. With refined foods such as crackers, jelly babies, white breads, and so on, you deprive your body of this step. And this is a downside of the ketogenic or carnivore style diet. You completely deprive your gut microbiome of these foods that they feed on. And this is likely to have knock on effects on your cognition, be it in the short term or in the long term. So whether you're getting ready for the Olympics or you simply want a brain boost, complex carbohydrates are great, but sugar not so much. 
However, it always depends. While you won't see Cristiano or LeBron eating bags of jelly babies on their day off, they do consume highly processed sugars when they need to perform. Consuming up to 90 grams of sugar per hour in exercise is often a tactic employed by athletes to maximize their performance. After all, carbohydrates are your muscle's preferred source of energy. Now, I do get it. Four quarters in the NBA finals is a lot different than sitting down to write your business strategy, but hear me out. Researchers found that during short duration exercise, when athletes had sugar infused into their blood, there were no performance benefits. But when they gave the exact same amount of carbohydrates through the mouth taken orally, there was a benefit. And from that moment, they learned that carbohydrate sensors in the taste buds affect our performance through our brain, a phenomenon isolated to carbohydrates only. This also gave birth to something called mouth rinsing. You probably have seen it before, watching the game and athletes spits out the drink. It's not water, it's just a clear solution made up by the backroom staff. It's not that they don't like the taste, but they're actually activating their mental performance through this mouth and brain link. Of course, there is no downside to just swallowing the drink, but when you're exercising at very high intensities, you can experience gut issues. So how does this apply to you? Well, this research area is still relatively new, but it does suggest that consuming small amounts of quick digesting sugars could boost your brain power. While your brain does use at least 130 grams of carbohydrates per day, during heavy cognitive tasks, this will be likely significantly higher. Now, of course, you don't wanna be doing this all day long or your diet will just be full of sugar. I suggest that outside of exercise, you reserve this tactic for occasional times when you really need to meet that deadline or get something over the line. What I personally would recommend is something like 30 grams of carbohydrates per hour. That would be the equivalent of one sports drink, like a Gatorade or Lucozade. Now on the topic of drinking, hydration plays a key role in performance. Typically, athletes tend to not want to lose more than 2% of their overall body weight during exercise. And while you may not be profusely sweating during study or work, you do lose water through your breath going to the bathroom and in small amounts of sweat that may go unnoticed. And while I don't think you need a very specific strategy amount, I do think that making sure you're drinking something is important, especially if you wake up and start working straight away because you're essentially going eight hours without drinking anything. Now, besides water, another liquid that is proven to combat mental fatigue is coffee. I personally think coffee is a better choice than energy drinks or pre-workout kind of supplements or caffeine tablets or anything like that because caffeine contains, or coffee I should say, contains polyphenols in the coffee beans. Caffeine works to prevent your brain releasing the reward hormone dopamine and essentially traps that dopamine in your brain leading to greater amounts and that in turn leads to greater levels of motivation. For me, caffeine is a double-edged sword. While it may improve performance in the short term, if taken too close to bed, it's definitely an issue. I've worked with many entrepreneurs and execs who obsess about improving their mental performance, but more often than not, their sleep is terrible. Long nights, working, early starts, and thinking that every waking hour needs to be productive. The problem is nutrition can have game-changing effects on performance, but if your sleep is compromised, focusing on minor changes in nutrition is like trying to use a hairdryer out in the rain. So to recap, fasting or ketogenic diets are likely going to be inferior for both mental and physical performance. Although if you like doing them, then by all means, go ahead. A diet rich in polyphenols, particularly the dark colors, is ideal. A simple task for you this week would be simply to just pay attention to how many different colors you're consuming and maybe try add one or two. A diet rich in whole grain carbohydrates will improve gut health and in turn brain function, but consuming some amounts of sugars during intense exercise or intense focus sessions can be beneficial. And finally, staying hydrated is key, reserving caffeine for early mornings or times when you really need to get locked in. Again, if you want to apply all of this, then check the link for the Built to Last coaching program. And if you want to learn more about a 360 approach to health, fitness, and physique, then check out this video that I made here.